In this last video of our Truths and Promises Bible study, we are going to be covering uh, free and redeemed. Let me open us in prayer as we begin this. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. That's Psalm 118, 24. And I'm going to pray, Father, that you would open our ears and our hearts and our minds as we continue and finish this study about your truths and promises that you will enable us to see your character and the power that you have to make promises and to keep those promises. Help us to understand and turn our thought processes around from self-defeating thoughts to your truth. In your precious son Jesus name, amen. So if we look at free, here's what I've done on my pages. I just have to tell you as I finished um, decorating and adding all my notes to this book, I'm so excited. It's so pretty and what a wonderful way to spend your time when you're a retired person in studying God's word and then making things beautiful as I write his word out. It just fills me with so much peace and this has just been a wonderful uh, journey. I hope you are getting as much out of this as um, I have. So let's start with you are set free and the Bible verse for that is Romans 8, 1 to 2. And I'll read that verse, those verses. You are not guilty. Let him go free. What would those words mean to you if you were on death row? The fact that the whole human race is on death row, justly condemned for repeatedly breaking God's holy law. Without Jesus, we would have no hope at all. But thank God he has declared us not guilty and has offered freedom from sin and power to do his will. I said we were going to read it, and I'm sorry I didn't read it first. I was reading my notes. Let's read the verse. Therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. So the being free is about, um, let's just go back over with what I just did this from the commentary, that let's say you are on trial, which of course we all are before we um, before God. And God says, well, you're not guilty, let him go free, even though maybe you did something really wrong. And so those words would mean a whole lot to you, wouldn't they, if you were on death row? And so um, just getting that sense of he has declared us not guilty and has offered freedom from sin and power to do his will. So not only does he um, relieve me of my, uh, the burden of my sin, but he gives me the power to do that. And then um, Romans 8, 2, we're talking about the commentary. The spirit of life is the Holy Spirit. He was present at the creation of the world Genesis 1-2. And he is the power behind the rebirth of every Christian. He gives us the power we need to live the Christian life. We cannot do this on our own. Only when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior does the Holy Spirit come and live within us. And then he, it's in his power of his changing my heart, my mind, my thought process that I can live that victorious um, Christian life. A couple other notes that I've got. <clears throat> For freedom, Christ has set us free, so I can stand firm thereafter, and I do not submit again to a yoke of slavery, meaning he's already set me free. Why would I go backwards and take all that sin and, and guilt back on me? I don't need to do that because I can accept Jesus Christ's death on the cross as the payment for my sin. And as we submit to Christ, sin loses its power. Christ's power takes over. As we choose to trust and follow him, our sinful habits, thoughts, and attitudes lose their control. Guilt disappears and peace of mind dominates. Aren't those just wonderful things to think about, but not only think about, but I hope that's your experience in life after you've accepted Jesus Christ's death, that he took away, the, he, he paid the price for my sin. And as I submit to him in all my thoughts and deeds, 
that the Christ power takes over me. And then when I trust and follow him, those sinful habits that I have and thoughts and attitudes um, lose their control. And one more, what does it mean to be set free? He takes away the thing that has limited my ability to live and develop, which is my guilt and my shame. If you are forgiven, you are forgiven completely and totally. Sin, shame, guilt, all of it is dealt with when Jesus sets you free. That is such power and um, amazing uh, feeling when you're set free, that burden that you've carried around on, on your back, on your shoulders, in your mind, in your heart, it's gone. It, you don't have to keep carrying it. You can let it go. You know that saying, let go and let God, that this is one of those ways about being set free. So let me just talk to you about the decorations that I did. So I made a large um, pocket. You can see that one right there. Then I added another pocket and then I added another piece as another pocket. So I have one, two, three pockets in this one little set here, which I loved. And I needed all that because I had so many ideas that I wanted to make sure I wanted to remember about being set free. And on the manila uh, tag that I inserted into the whole journal, I just decided to use more washi tape because I loved when I did that over, let's see, where did I do it? Oh, I did it somewhere. Okay, I thought I did it somewhere. Or did I do it again? <laughs> Maybe that's the first one that I did. That's what happens. Okay, that's the first one that I did because, yes, I did it on the back of this one. That's where I knew I did it again. And then this is that really fun little envelope and I t twisted it around and didn't use it as an envelope. I used it as a flip up and put the Bible verse um, uh, ATC tag on the inside of it as a flip up and just added a black doily and of course one of my butterflies and some jewels and then I have this wonderful set of stamps that I got from oh my gosh I'm going to forget right this moment sassy sassy stamps uh, they're the scrabble tiles and so I wanted to put free on there that I am free so that's what I did for I am free and then the last truth and promise of the 10 that we have explored in this study is I am redeemed. And that is from Isaiah 44, 22. I have swept away your offenses like a cloud, your sins like the morning mist. Return to me for I have redeemed you. Isn't that a wonderful word picture? I have swept away your offenses like a cloud and your sins are like morning mist, which of course we know in the first part of the morning, it's there and you can see it. And then as the sun comes up, that mist just disappears because he has redeemed us. And so as I showed you on here, I put some of the blue washi tapes on this one. And then I added another piece that I just cut out of one of the pieces of paper and I added this beautiful lace on top as a belly band. So let's look at what I went and looked up um, you are redeemed. So I read the verse, Isaiah 44, 22. I have swept away your offenses like a cloud. Your sins are like the morning mist. Return to me, for I have redeemed you. Well, what actually is redemption? It's a metaphor for what is achieved through the atonement. Therefore, there is a metaphorical sense in which the death of Jesus pays the price of a ransom releasing Christians from bondage to sin and death. And that's what redemption is. I have been redeemed. He has taken away um, that sin and my ultimate death. First Peter 1, 18 to 19, it says, We are redeemed with the precious blood. For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed, meaning I'm going to pay you God said, I'll pay money for you to be uh, set free like a prisoner would, right? But it's the um, from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. That's what how we've been redeemed with God's son, Jesus, precious blood. So who's been redeemed? Well, actually, all of mankind has. And in what way does Jesus redeem us? Well, 
if you look at his, um, by his passion, his death, his resurrection, and his ascension. To redeem means to buy back something that has been lost, sold, or given away. Because of original sin and our personal sins, we were slaves of the devil. Well, how does God redeem me? How, how does that happen? Well, God loved mankind enough to send his son Jesus to pay the penalty for mankind's sin by his death upon the cross. For us to receive that forgiveness and redemption, we must go to him and ask for our sins to be forgiven. Jesus has what we need, but we must do our part in asking and receiving. What are some examples of redemption in the Bible? I wanted to look up those just to get a good picture in my mind. Well, if you look at Joseph, well, he survived jealous brothers who sold him into slavery. Then he got imprisoned. Then Pharaoh pulls him out of prison because he can interpret dreams. And now he's a leader. And he ends up forgiving his family because God had good things for him and redeemed his past for good. So even though he lived through all that, God knew in his ultimate plan, because he knows that for each of us, that he was going to use him to save um, the people through those, um, what was it, 14 years or seven years. And then in Genesis 50, 20, you intend, well, that's the verse for to Joseph example, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So God knew that Joseph was going to be a savior, right, for, for many lives, not like Jesus the savior, and that he redeemed his past. And then the last thing was Ruth. She had great faith Despite her husband died, she had no children. She had left her home and her country, and she was living with her mother-in-law, Naomi. But God restored both Ruth and Naomi. So those are some just some stories that help you understand what it is to be redeemed. And I decided on my last pages that I wanted to write myself a synopsis of what I learned. And so I'm going to read to you what I've written. I used the last tag and decorated it and added one of my new little uh, paperclip dangle things, which was kind of fun. So let me read to you what, I, what I'm saying I learned. And I hope that you will do this also in this study or in any other Bible study that you do. When you're finished with this study, you might have all these notes. But in the future, if you want to go back and say, yeah, I remember that was good. But what was good about it? Well, then I would read my notes. And here's what I said. This Bible study has been a wonderful journey, deepening my faith in God, understanding his character and power to make promises and to keep them. God's promises are all I have and all I need. And we talked about that when I introduced this whole study. I belong to him. He sees me even when I feel invisible. I am his workmanship, his work of art. He has chosen me to bear fruit for him. That is my purpose, and I am victorious when I submit to God. He gives me the power and strength to overcome whatever is trying to defeat me. I know the peace of God as I draw near to him daily, as I grow in my knowledge of him. And how do I grow in that is reading the Bible every day. It is a gift from God. I have been given the invitation to participate and I have answered the phone call from God and listen as he speaks with me and I hear his special plan for my life. I am blameless as I am willing to be taught and willing to be led. I am set free and I am forgiven. I am redeemed. I am set free of my past and my sins have been forgiven. And at the end of that, I would say amen. And what does that mean? So be it. So a couple things I just want to go over with you as, um, as we kind of go over the end of this study and some thoughts to leave you with. Our God is a God of good and perfect. He's faithful and he's true to his word. Hopefully you've heard that in the verses that we've chosen. He is also determined to bless us. He won't let our sin keep us from him and his promises. What a, what a um, wonderful thought that is that just gives you such a, a peace. 
Because Jesus came to earth to conquer sin and death, to open the door for those who would believe him and to have a relationship with our loving, generous God. And in this relationship, we get to claim not just some, but all the promises of God. How many did I tell you there were? Like over 30,000? Because, not because we're good and perfect and deserving, but because of what Jesus did for us. You can claim his promises all in the mighty name of Jesus. What promises are you clinging on to in this season? Through this Bible study, I hope that you have believed and received his promises. And I hope that you want to, um, that your, your mind will shift from doubt to trust and that you will grow in your faith through this Bible study. I know that you can stand on his promises. Will you allow Jesus to move in your life and discover his promises for your life? What promises will you embrace today from this study? Please write those notes. Write that answer in the comments. I would love to know the impact that this study has had. Uh, what, what truth really hit home with you? What self-defeating thought got replaced with with this wonderful truth and that you now can somewhat um, be relieved and be set free. I'm going to close us out with Romans 15, 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I will say amen. <laughs>